In today's video, I'm going to show you how I 3D printed a phone case using recycled plastic bottles and how you can do it too at home. Let's get started. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So the topic of recycling comes up a lot in 3D printing. It's one of those sort of utopian ideas of a closed loop system where you can 3D print something and then recycle it into raw material to then use again on your 3D printer. And it's honestly something that I really would like to see in future because I certainly know as someone who 3D prints a lot, you end up with a lot of parts that either fail or aren't the right size when you get them fitted or you even just end rolls that aren't quite enough to be reused in a print. I really do wish I could recycle these, but unfortunately for the most case, I can't and there's a few reasons why. Firstly, although most countries have an organized recycling program for plastics, it relies on marked plastic systems. And for example, we don't know what material this plastic print is. I do, I know it was printed in PLA. I know this was printed in PLA, but I don't know if the manufacturer modified it in any way. And this part was printed in ABS, completely different materials that can't be commingled when you recycle them. So unfortunately for the most part, unmarked plastics just has to go in the dump. <laughs> Having said that though, there are machines and projects out there for recycling your own plastics at home into filament for 3D printing, but they face their own set of challenges. Beyond the plastics being different types and needing different extrusion temperatures, there's also contamination issues, and then there's the dimensional accuracy problem. If you look at a roll of filament that may be a kilo, that is hundreds of meters of filament that is almost precisely 1.75 millimeter diameter or 2.85 millimeter diameter. If that deviates above or below that number by a fraction of an amount, your machine will either stop extruding by jamming or skipping and failing to grip the filament. Therefore, your print, which may be several hours long, will end up in the scrap pile that you presumably started with to extrude that new filament. However, there are companies that are occupying the space in the middle, using high-end professional equipment to take post-consumer and industrial plastic waste and turn that into filament you can print at home. And one such company is Refill. So Refill reached out to me and asked if I was interested in testing out their filament, and I had heard about them a year or so before, where they were turning car dashboards, which are ABS plastic, into filament, which was pretty cool. At the time, I thought it was more like a research project, and if you've been involved in 3D printing, ABS isn't the easiest material to print with, but they're now offering PET recycled material with up to 90% recycled content in a variety of colors, either using, for example, Sprite bottles for green or a certain brand of water bottles for blue. However, I opted for their most basic option, which is a mixed source, gray or opaque white PET filament. So matching their branding, it comes in a very nice recycled cardboard box, no flashy uh, full color stamping or anything like that. And cracking it open, they sent me a very, very nice note saying, Dear Angus, we are very pleased that you're interested in our filament. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask us any time with regards the refill team. So the roll itself, is actually a cardboard spool. And I have hated cardboard spools in the past for the filament jamming up down the side. It's just not as rigid as a plastic spool. However, this cardboard is much thicker than the ones I am complaining about in the past. And I've been printing with this for a bit and I haven't experienced any issues with the filament catching. As you can see here, the color is definitely very interesting. It's sort of a milky gray, smoky sort of color, and it is 90% recycled PET. So this has been sourced from bottles like this bottle here that have been recycled, ground down, washed and cleaned to make them clean and uh, suitable for re reuse, and then extruded on professional level machines that get the dimensional accuracy you need for your 3D printer. So to test it off, I used my sort of vase mode test on the Prusher i3 Mark II just to see how it would go, and I chose 210 degrees for the extruding temperature. And this is the result of the Prusa i3 Mark II. So it's a really clean result with no missed extrusion. I did notice the layer adhesion in some areas isn't very good. So that suggests here that my temperature was a little bit too low, but it's super clean. And you would not know this was made from recycled content at all, which is really neat. Like there's no loss in quality by using this filament over another brand of PET. So this got me thinking, what would be an interesting print to use this filament on that I could take around and sort of spread the idea 
of recycled 3D printed materials. And I thought, okay, what do I use every day? I use my phone. So I looked on Thingiverse and found a really nice, simple iPhone 6 case and I downloaded it and stuck it onto my Pressure i3 Mark II and I ramped up my print temperature a little bit higher to try to print it off. And I came back to the print greeted with this. So I have printed with sort of PET materials before and I definitely have seen this before. I'm not exactly sure what causes it, but in a PTFE lined extruder, it sometimes fails to extrude properly and just makes these wispy bits. And that is very much a failed print. It, um, it just wasn't extruding correctly. And no matter what I did, it wasn't working. It's probably fixable. But in this case, I decided to move to another machine. So some of you guys have said in my recent video on 3D printers under $350 that the CETAs can print PET and PETG. So I thought, all right, I'll give that a shot. And it did also work for this first part, but then it stopped extruding. And that's definitely an issue with the machine uh, overheating the filament, the ups and the CETAs have an extruder motor that gets very hot and it just stopped extruding. So as a last ditch attempt, I tried it on the Wanhao i3 Mark II, which is the rebrand to the Cocoon Create with my Flexion extruder. And I ran my temperature up to 235 degrees, which sort of deviates between 230, 235, which is pretty hot. And it worked perfectly. <laughs> I printed quite slow at 0.15 millimeter layers at 30% speed, so it did take around two and a half hours, but I wasn't looking for speed here, I was looking for a result that finished, and I am super stoked with the quality of it. So I printed straight down on the print bite surface, the back is glossy, and it snaps the phone into place really nicely. Uh, it's tethered to my microphone, by the way, <laughs> so I'm currently using this phone, but it's it's actually, it's really tight, there's no, there's no shaking, and it's a really cool case, so when I go around, People, can, it's sort of a conversation starter on this whole topic. People can say, that's an interesting case. And I'd be like, yeah, it's 3D printed, which is cool for a start, but it's 3D printed with recycled bottles, recycled plastic. So that all sounds awesome, Angus, but there has to be a catch. Well, there kind of is, and it's not really the price. The price of their filament is reasonable considering the extra effort that goes into producing recycled filaments. You have to wash it, sort it, clean it, grind it, then extrude it properly. It's more the material properties that are the issue. When you remelt plastics, they deteriorate slightly. So they lose a little bit of their structural integrity and strength. That's just how plastics work. The more you melt them down, the, the weaker they get, I suppose. But also we need to look at the material itself. PET is designed for a specific industrial process called blow molding, where you have a small sort of injection molded master, and then they heat it up and blast in, uh, compressed air into it, and it expands into a cavity, a mold. And that's how they produce the very thin walls of these sort of bottles. So these walls are super, super thin, and therefore they're very flexible. And this material, if you print it super thin, is very flexible. You're not gonna have any issue moving it like that, sort of crushing it, that kind of thing. It's very hard to break it. However, once you make it a little bit thicker, things change a bit. So this was a, another dud that I printed, and I'm gonna put on some safety glasses for this. These are actually laser glasses, but they all serve the same purpose. I look super fly right now. So PET in this case is tough, but when it decides to let go, there you go, it shatters. So when PET fails, it will either do a ductal failure or it will fail uh, with a brittle failure where it will explode and shatter like you just saw. So that makes it not very suitable for parts that need structural integrity and probably not the best material to choose for a phone case, I'll be honest. That's why you don't tend to see PET filaments for 3D printing, you tend to see PETG filaments which have a glycol blend added to them to improve their strength, I suppose, and stop them failing brittily. But what I would really like to know, guys, is what you would print with this 90% recycled PET. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know and I'll choose some of the best ideas and print them out and upload them to my Twitter. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on recycled filament from Refill. I am really impressed with the print quality off this plastic. It was a little bit tricky to dial in, but it does work really well. And I'm gonna rock my phone case for as long as it lasts. I've already broken the screen of this phone twice, so. We'll see how it goes, it is just an iPhone 6. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, guys, and wanna see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, and projects, hit that subscribe button, it helps us out a huge amount. 
I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing, guys. Bye.